ਆਦਿਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਚਿਖਾਦਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਸਤਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰਦੇਵੇ ਨਨ ਆਦਿਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਚਿਖਾਦਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਸਤਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰਦੇਵੇ ਨਨ ਆਦਿਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਚਿਖਾਦਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਸਤਗਰੇ ਨਨ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰਦੇਵੇ ਨਨ I'm Guru Fatah Singh and I'm a teacher of Kundalini Yoga. I'm going to talk to you today about blocks and props. And um let me just start off with first props go that um there was a beautiful saying it was on the yoga poster that I came to when I first came to Kundalini Yoga it said learn to stand on your own lotus feet. I thought that was so great. I haven't heard that lately so I want to share it to you give it some new life you can use it yourself use it perhaps in your um self motivation or in your advertising learn to stand on your own lotus feet it's, it encapsulates the uh, the path of kundalini yoga very well because we want to be self reliant there's no purpose in running around looking for people to touch their feet and idolize them uh respect for a teacher is a good thing yes but uh a good teacher will teach you to stand on your own lotus feet so let's talk about some props when i started we had a simple uh tool it was a sheep skin right yogi bhajan had a lion skin uh which somebody gave to him it was a, apparently it was a uh a man eater you know it was a, it's a killer um but uh, he advised cheap skins are readily available and they're not killed for their skins um the skin is just a, a byproduct people more much more money in selling their meat so we got the skins and and as a matter of fact someone just gave me a fantastic sheep skin um which is not a, a skin it just comes from the the wool and somebody arranged in a fantastic way to make a a rectangle out of it uh with some cloth on the bottom looks kind of like a skin looks a lot like a skin it does the same job it has the same buffering quality that's why we had the skins you know we told us that uh, the skin gives your magnetic field a bit of a buffer between the earth's it's very strong magnetic field so you can better meditate and if you want to look at the old uh text the manu smriti it again we will say it will suggest that a yogi uses uh grass or a particular grass to sit on and on the grass they put a deer skin deer skins were very available in those days so it's an old tradition to have a skin to sit on and uh, so i was very surprised when the uh, uh those rolling mats came out in the 1990s so i'm an old yogi right so from the 70s yogi i didn't like the the mats they smell bad and um uh, i don't really think they do anything for your for your meditation maybe give a bit of a cushion for your bum uh they can lay out your space in the yoga centers so nobody intrudes on your space but um i like the the sheep skins i like the skins and so that was one of, that was our basic prop that was the thing we brought to our tantric courses to our yoga courses to our sadhana so we sit on our skin yeah and i encourage my students to do the same there's no point in me i'm the great teacher i have a sheep skin and my students they sit on yoga mats the yoga mats smell bad anyway they come from mostly if they come from synthetic from petroleum based stuff even the rubber ones you know when i can just have a proper sheep skin and use that or if you really want you can use both but um for your meditation you want a skin okay prop number 1 um I I used to laugh, you know, we we used to say well, let's get rid of our blocks, you know, let's get rid of our personality blocks and our spiritual blocks and our emotional blocks. We do that meditation, we're going to do that kundalini yoga, and we're going to thrive and we're going to go through. And then come the 90s, people started to bring blocks to class. I laughed, you know. <laughs> we didn't used to bring our blocks, you know, to keep them. Nobody wants to give up their blocks these days. They bring their block, they bring their strap and Lali, lali, lali. Yeah. Please don't be too attached to your blocks. Um there's lots of ways of doing kundalini yoga without having blocks. I'm half joking, right? I think maybe some people just can't sit without a brick under their butt. But um you know, be mindful. 
keep it keep it to the basics this is my basic philosophy now the last thing i want to talk about is gongs right so the story goes that when yokichi came to los angeles that's one of the first things he had the shakti parvakar look to find for him and he went all over town to she finally found a, a nice gong and um, you know in in canada um uh, we never had gongs in our Kundalini Yoga classes till about 1999 or so. Um, story goes that um, I had a student and she was an actress and she spent part of the time in Los Angeles and part of the time in Hollywood North. We used to call Toronto Hollywood North. And she said, why don't you get a gong? So, why not? You had a gong. I knew that. So, got a gong and uh, started. And then eventually, I the idea got around to the oh, you know, your father's saying, as a gong, why don't I get a gong? Well, I gong for a yoga center. Da, 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 da. Um, nothing wrong with gongs. Yogaji had a gong, right? Um, what I'm going to critique, however, is um, uh, how the gong is used or misused. And uh, I would suggest you uh, look at some of the videos where Yogaji used a gong or check some of the manuals where a gong is uh, described as part of the, the yoga set. And uh, in my study, uh, I would see that typically Yogaji would uh, do something before the gong and something after the gong, or something after the gong. Um, you know, somehow the gong would be integrated into a whole program. And very often he would have you exhausted before the gong came. Uh, he was creating an opening creating an opening in your mind. He called the gong the voice of God. You know, it's like this powerful voice. And the, the great thing about the gong, or the voice of God, if you like, is that you may have a chattering mind that loves to chatter, 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 chatter. But when the gong is happening, the mind goes silent. The mind goes silent. And that's a fantastic thing. Because it takes a lot to make the mind go silent. You know, you may do... A lot of meditation and to get a few seconds of silence is pretty amazing. To go to Shunya, go to the zero empty mind where there's no chatter going on. So he used the gong as, as we call, sometimes we call it powerful medicine. You know, it's a methodology that's very potent to create a space in your brain, in your mind, where uh, meditation can take root or where mantra could take root. Often he would give us the gong, uh, we would have a relaxation, have the waves of the gong sweeping over us, and then he would revive us, and he would give us a mantra. And so it would be like uh, clearing the, the field, clearing the ground of weed and rocks, so the seed of the mantra can take root. And a uh, very powerful methodology, with an open and a clear mind, it's a beautiful experience to take up a mantra. Your mind is clean and open and very receptive at that time. What I'm finding now is that uh, some people are doing uh, gong baths. You know, come and I'll play the gong, 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 gong. And you lie down and you bliss out and give me money and then you go home. And then next week you come back and give me money. Gong, gong, gong. Go back and you have a... Uh, habitual we have a good business model you know because people are coming back is it an addictive behavior maybe it is you know because you're not teaching people to stand on their own two feet they would need you to gong 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 for them unless they're very rich you know and then they can hire somebody with a gong that can follow them wherever they go boom 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 or put it on their earphones right but that's not kundalini yoga is taught by yogi bhaja no and even, you know, um, you know, for many solstices, Yogiji didn't have a gong. He did, we did very well without the gong. Because Yogiji had the presence. He had the shakti. He did his sadhana. So he could present, he could project kundalini. <clears throat> he could project higher consciousness. Some people, you know, today they think, well, I've got a gong. I'm a powerful person now. Boom, 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 boom. Listen to me. Boom, boom, boom. I paid, you know, 4,000 bucks for my training and 3,000 bucks for my gong. I'm a $7,000 yogi. Bong, 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 bong. 
and, and people will buy into it and say, wow, you know, Joe Schmo is a really great yogi. You go to his class and you bliss out, bong, 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 bong. But um, I'm going to go back and do the bong, bong again. Uh, but uh, that's not how yogi ji taught. You know, he taught, he wanted you to have a strong sadhana. He wanted us as teachers to encourage people to be self-reliant, to develop that open mind, to develop a space where the mantra could go in and the meditative mind can develop. And from that, then sadhana develops and communities develop. Great things develop. But it all just go and go. Oh, please, you know. So, um, a word to the wise, right? Let's... Uh, Let's sit like yogis, let's have our skins, let's uh, treat our gongs with a lot of reverence. You know, if you have a gong and you play the gong, treat it with a great deal of respect. It's a very powerful instrument. Um, but don't let the gong be your class. You know, you're still the teacher. Um, present the class as taught by Yogi Bhajan, as, as passed through the golden chain. And let the gong help you to present Kundalini Yoga. But um, still, it's it's your class. It's, it's Yogi Bhajan Kundalini Yoga. Kundalini Yoga is taught by Yogi Bhajan. And many times, most times, he taught without a gong. All right, you become reliant on your gong for your persona, for your public relations as a Kundalini Yogi, as a teacher, you've got a problem. You're leaning too much. Learn to stand on your own. Lotus feet. That goes for students and teachers alike. Okay? Makes sense? I hope so. Or you can contact me if you have any questions. You go to my website, gurufatasingh.com, and there's a contact place you can go. All right? God bless you. Be great. Satnam.